Well, hey folks, welcome back to another exciting episode of the In The Loop TV. I am your host, CTC Cutting Tool Counselor Don Grant, here with hopefully another exciting episode of In The Loop TV. Can I help you with something? Uh, something you need? I am the future you, here to see how you do it. Really? Yeah, just get tips. Okay, well, just stay out of the way, stand huh. there, and you can watch, and I'll show you how the master oh, does the it. the master. Hopefully the master. you can get some pointers for your okay. episode. Was Don Grant, CTC, County Tool Counselor. As I said before, just ignore him. He's fine. Ignore me. Um, this is going to be a great episode. Please, before we get started, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and kind of just share it with anybody that you think will gain from the knowledge that we bring, again, as a cutting tool company, uh, to you folks on YouTube. This one's going to be great. We are going to talk about something a little bit different. We're going to talk about surface foot. S-F-M. This is something very interesting and a lot of people... Is, 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 you, is there a problem with that? Surf Do you seriously have a problem with it's surface foot? It's stupid. Who? Surface foot? That's a stupid subject. Yes. Really? Hold, hold, hold the music. And you think you can do better. I'll tell you what. You come back next Hello. week or the week after. You do your show. Right Hello. now, it's time to I'll skedaddle. Surface foot. Coming right back. Please enjoy. And we'll be talking about it next. Well, hey folks, how you doing? Thanks for coming back. And I apologize for that gentleman a little bit earlier. He can do his show when it comes around time for him to do his. I love talking about surface foot. I think surface foot is very misunderstood when it comes to cutting tools. Whether you're using a drill, whether you're using an end mill, whether you're using a reamer, surface foot, we need to understand a little bit more about it because I think once you understand about surface foot, you can start using it a little bit better. And there's a couple things that are going on with surface foot, especially now with new tool pass that could be killing your tools. We're going to talk about that, and I can't wait to do it, but I'm not going to do it here. Where are we going to do it? We're going to run to the shop. We're going to talk about it next. Okay, folks, thanks for joining me at the shop. This episode, surface foot. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of things with surface foot I can't wait to dive into. But before we do that, let's just get the boring stuff out of the way. What is surface foot or surface feet per minute? There's a couple things I want you to understand when we're talking about surface foot, okay? Number one is surface foot or surface feet per minute, which is how we control our RPM, whether it's from a rotating tool or whether it's from a static tool on a lathe that's spinning. Surface foot is how we calculate our RPM. So not only is it controlling our RPM, okay, it's also where the heat is, right? I want you to think of this whole episode as surface foot is heat. Surface foot is heat, okay? The higher the surface foot or the surface foot number that we're recommending as a cutting tool company, the more heat we're producing at the point of contact. Okay, got that? So now if we know surface footage is heat and what we're recommending for surface footage is heat at the point of contact, now we have to jump to the material. The material has something called machinability, okay? I'm not gonna dive into machinability, but it's a great episode for a little bit later. Machinability is the ability of a material to either withstand heat or to take heat and push it back into the cutting tool. So the machinability rating on different materials is where we control the surface foot. Because remember, I said it was heat. So now if we just take the two and mash them together before we get into the fun stuff, we have machinability of a material. Okay, just to give you an idea of that, aluminum, machinability is very high. It's very easy to machine. And you know what? It takes heat away with the chip. Surface foot can go up. We can put a lot of heat into aluminum because the machinability is very high and it's very easy to machine. As we get into titanium and ink canals, guess what? They have a great ability to resist heat. The machinability is very low. So if the machinability is low, 
the surface foot needs to be low. We got to create less heat at the point of contact. So in doing this, what do you see as an operator or a machinist from people from myself, application engineers? When you ask for a recommendation of surface footage, what do you get? I know, I used to be a machinist. I got the same people coming in my shop. You get these answers. Hey, I would run that in 4140 steel from 250 surface foot to 700. Well, what does that mean? Why can I run from 250 to 700? Well, first of all, there's a couple reasons there's a span on that surface foot that we're gonna dive into. So why is there such a big span on surface foot? Really, truthfully, I don't know. I don't know why it's always been that way. I can tell you, I know that there's different substrates of carbide, there's different coatings, and I can understand where that would change where the surface foot would be from 100 to 500 in most situa situations. But a lot of that has to do nowadays with the tool path. The tool path has a lot to do with where we're running with the surface foot because tool path, different tool paths, will generate heat, okay? And if tool paths are generate heat, which means we're taking a different radial, a different axial, different recommendations, and we're introducing heat, then we can manipulate the surface footage to get us what we want to get the most productivity, number one, and to get the best tool life. So now let's jump into what I alluded to at the beginning. Is surface footage killing your end mill? Yes, it is killing your end mill. And we sought out as a company, actually during COVID, to try and figure out how we could manipulate surface footage with our tools to be more productive, more productive and to give you more tool life. And that's what I'm gonna to explain to you right now. But first, we have to understand some of the principles of the tool path in order to manipulate the surface footage. So let's first talk about a widely used tool path that we call HEM, high efficiency machining. You might have heard of it. That's your dynamic milling. That's your uh, uh, fusion um, adaptive clearing. That's your volume mill. That's your profit milling. These are all tool paths that control the cutting edge, control the heat at the cutting edge, and control the angle of engagement to put a tool in a really good situation, okay? We need to understand how this tool path works so I can teach you how to manipulate the surface foot. So a lot of HEM tool paths are based on the principle of taking a heavy axial depth and a light radial depth, okay? Let's focus on the light radial. Why do we take a light radial depth with HEM tool paths? We do this couple reasons, okay? I'm not going to dive into high efficiency machining because that'd make a great thing for a little bit later. But the main reason we take a light radial is because we can control the heat, okay? Light radial, heavy axial, we can control the heat. This is why we see in so many high efficiency tool paths, we start bringing up the surface foot, right? We start recommending higher surface foot. We're looking at titaniums, inconels, um, 316L stainless, 174, 138. Well, we're starting to say, hey, let's run an HEM, high efficiency tool path. Let's control the heat at the cutting edge by taking a light radial and let's bring our surface foot up, right? So if you're running titanium, how many times have you heard a recommendation of 400 surface foot, 500 surface foot in titanium? And this is because we're reducing the heat at the cutting edge with our surface foot, we can bring it up. We can put more heat in there and be more productive. So is this the right way to think about it? This is what I wanted to think as a cutting tool counselor and as somebody that's been doing this for 35 years, we have to think differently. Is that surface foot killing the end mill or is that radial step over killing the end mill, which is causing the most damage. I wanted to figure this out and I wanted to help out my customers and help out the cutting tool general public to see if we can find out if surface foot is killing our end mill. So is it killing your end mill? Is surface foot killing your end mill? Yes, it is. And I'm going to prove it to you. And I'm going to show you an example of how this surface foot is killing your end mill. But before we dive into that, I just want to tell you something that we're kind of proud of here at Harvey Performance. And if you want more information on this, please let us know, call 
or even put some information below and I'll help you out a little bit more. We created a new strategy that we're very proud of called HREM. HREM. Remember HEM, High Efficiency Machining? We have this new strategy that we call HREM. And what it is is Heavy Radial Efficiency Machining. Okay? This is where we're going to manipulate surface foot with a super alloy. It works a lot better when a material is pushing a lot more heat. Trust me, in aluminum, softer material, this strategy doesn't work as well. But it works great. And any material that's pushing the heat back into your, your, uh, your cutting tool. Let me explain. So heavy radio, what does that mean? Well, this means what we're going to do is we're going to take the tool and we're going to reduce our surface foot and we're going to increase the radial step over. Now understand an HEM or high efficiency tool path, and we'll talk about dynamic mill or we can talk about uh, uh, adaptive clearing or a volume mill. All of them do the same thing. They control the angle of engagement. So if they're controlling the angle of engagement, this really allows us to take a heavier radial than you would think in order to get the chips out. The software is controlling that for us. We take a light radial because we want to jack up the surface foot and we want to be more productive. What we want to do is we want to bring our surface foot down and we want to bring our radial over, let the tool path control it and see which is generating the most heat, right? What is causing the most heat? Is it that surface foot? Or is it that radio? Let's run through and show you. Okay, let's take an example with titanium. This is where we're going to dive in. I'm going to show you exactly how this works. We're going to use titanium 6AL4V that I ran a bunch of studies and tests on. Let's just take a look at this. In HEM, high efficiency machining, this is recommendations, not only from us, but from competitors and other. We're looking at titanium at about 400 surface foot. Okay, I've seen it up to 560, which is really high. And the reason we get away with that is because we take a light radial, 6%, 35,000 step over. Okay, we're going to feed this about 118 inches a minute, and there's chip thinning in there. Okay, and we're going to take a one inch axial. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to run three different tools, not even all our tools, three different tools at those parameters, and I want to give you the results. Okay, folks, let's just take a look at the results. Tool number one. Here's tool number one. Okay, we ran about a half an hour on this material. You can see a little bit built up edge on there. Cutting edge does not look great. You can see where it's sticking a little bit, and you can see where the heat is. Now let's jump. Tool number two. See number two? Looks very similar, very similar to tool number one. Again, this is at 400 surface foot, light radial, HEM, high efficiency tool path. Tool number three. You can see that all three tools look very similar, okay? And this is at 400 surface foot. So ran at 400 surface foot, a light radial, heavy axial, HEM, we have all similar results. Now, let's jump to the HREM strategy. Remember, heavy radial efficiency machining? Let's run into the other strategy. Let's get rid of that surface foot that we think is causing the heat. Let's drop it. Let's make it up from the radial and see what kind of results we get. Now let's drop the surface foot. Let's see if that surface foot is causing us problem in a material that's pushing heat back. Let's see if surface foot is giving us an issue. So now what we do is we drop the surface foot from 400 to 220. Still, 6AL4V. Now I'm going to take my radial step over from the 35 thou. I'm going to push that over to 130 thou at the same axial. Now why did I go 130 thou? There's something called material removal rate. Folks, I'm taking the same amount of cubes, cubic inches, off material as I wa was with the high efficiency tool path. Now let's take our feed. Our feed drops down. Now we're at 27 inches a minute. Remember we were at 118 inches a minute? Seems like it's running slower. I made it up with the radial step over. So now what we did is we dropped our surface foot, which we think is causing heats in titanium. We increased our radial step over to 130. We left a one inch axial. We didn't, we didn't skimp on that because the tool path is driving it and it's controlling our angle of engagement. And now we're feeding it at 27 inches a minute versus 118 inches a minute. Understand, 
3.51 uh, cubes one way, 3.51 cubes the other way. Same amount of cubes. Let's take a look at the results. Okay, folks, the results. Tool number one, same tool we ran on the other one. See that? Tool number two. You want to take a look? Does it look different? Does it look any better? Same amount of time, same amount of cubes, same amount of material removed. Let's look at the third tool. Let's take a look at the third one. Well, looky there. All three have the same results. So is this evidence? Is this evidence that we were able to evacuate the chips by taking a heavy radio? We dropped our surface foot and look at the results. We're seeing 150 times, 200 times the tool life by bringing our surface foot down in super alloys. Any material that's running a lot of heat or pushing the heat back in, I want you to drop your surface foot, okay? I want you to increase your radio, and I want you to get results like this on your shop, on your tools, on your material. So folks, quick recap time. This has been a long episode on surface foot. Is surface foot killing your MLs? Yes, I showed you an example, especially in super alloys. Surface foot is what's controlling the heat at the cutting edge. Start pulling it down, especially on those different alloys. Start taking your radial and making up some of it, something that we called HREM, heavy radial efficiency machining. Try it, doesn't work for everything, takes a little bit more horsepower, but we have to start pulling our surface foot back down to a manageable level, especially on your Inconels, your Waspaloys, Hastaloys, your Renes, your 316s, your 13H, your 174s, your 15.5s. Boy, that's a lot of materials we could go on forever. Your 465 stainlesses, your Carpenter 465, whole bunch of different materials that like to push heat back into the cutting edge. Pull your surface foot down, make it up by your radial, use something called HREM, and you're gonna get the same results that we see over and over again with our customers. Well, hey folks, that's a wrap. That's the end of this one. There's a lot of stuff on surface with, there's a lot of things we can deal with and, and we can actually manipulate. So understand we didn't touch on it all. Please put some questions or comments below, but I am telling you, surface foot is killing our end mills. Just be mindful, okay? We can bring the surface foot up. We can run a lot faster and things like that. But if you want to arrive, start pulling your surface foot down just a little bit. Be mindful on that. Things are gonna be up. Oh, are you kidding me? You're back. I'm back. You're back. I'm back. Wait a minute. Did you shave? I did. I did shave. You look like look good. That looked good for my episode, but you oh. did a great job. Okay. You did. Great. Well, thanks. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Anytime. Okay. Well, <laughs> thanks. I'm glad you guys tolerated this episode. But before I go, there's three things in life we'll never get away from. Death, taxes, and, and spring, spring passes. passes. Thank you and have a great rest of your week.